Hi guys, I'm here with Silence and the first question that I want to ask him is how is he feeling right now that he's on finals and who would he like to play against in finals? Então, como que você está se sentindo agora e com quem você gostaria de jogar contra nas finais? Tô me sentindo muito bem, é indescritível o que eu tô sentindo. Eu acho que para toda a equipe é a mesma coisa. É, antes de tudo isso começar, a gente não esperava nem chegar no BCB, a gente conseguiu a vaga pela Two Game, muito grato a isso. E agora, pô, a gente está nas Américas, na final das Américas, então isso é indescritível. E adversário, acho que eu não tenho nenhum adversário que eu quero enfrentar, e é isso. We don't really have a preference, and yeah, I have no words to describe the feeling that I'm feeling right now. We are really, really happy last year. We didn't even classify to challengers in Brazil, and now we are in the finals here in Americas. The second question that I want to ask him is that they haven't played a best of five eh, for now, so how are they preparing for this situation? Então, vocês ainda não jogaram BO5, como que vocês estão se preparando para isso? A preparação é sempre a mesma, óbvio que a gente nunca jogou um, um, um melhor de 5, acho que ninguém no time jogou, mas a preparação sempre foi a mesma, sempre foi ser a mesma, e é isso, nada muda e não vai ser cansativo não, vai ser rápido. It's going to be really fast, nothing changes really, we're going to prepare the same way that we are preparing, no one in the team has already played a best of five, so yeah, it's a new thing, but we're going to prepare the same way. And the last question that I want to ask him is that we saw his family here, and I want to ask if How does it feel to play in front of them? Então, como que foi jogar na frente da sua família? É outra sensação indescritível. É, todos os jogos da minha vida inteira, praticamente, minha mãe sempre estava lá para me apoiar. E ontem, do nada, ela apareceu lá no, no office, lá onde a gente fica. Me deu uma surpresa, eu fiquei de cara e, pô, isso é indescritível. E agora jogar, fazer cada round, conseguir olhar para a torcida e ver que ela está lá, dá um ânimo a mais para fazer no próximo round uma coisa melhor. Once again, no words. It was a surprise. I wasn't expecting my mom here and she came as a surprise. And yeah, every time that we're playing, looking to the people and just seeing her there is just, I get really emotional. Muito obrigada. Thank you very much, guys. Stay here because we have one more match. They say in life, there are no guarantees. Hmm. They say a lot of stuff like that. Slow it down. Play it safe. Hedge your bets. So what? You gonna listen to that? You gonna stop? Because they can't guarantee you'll pull this off? No guarantee you'll win? No guarantee everything's gonna be fine? your own guarantees. Nobody else will light your way. Start your own fire and keep it burning. And we guarantee you'll have one hell of a lifetime.
face. And with that, we have the first team in the grand finals here, VCT Ascension America's two game. I mean, we talked before the break with how much they've leveled up through the groove throughout this playoff and shift 
honestly, if they keep leveling up like this, like, yeah, maybe they're coming into this as one of the more inexperienced teams, but they they got a lot of potential and a lot of like going forward for them. They've got all the right puzzle pieces. It's just about yeah. making the picture come together, I think, when it matters most, especially in that last interview you heard them talking about. They have yet to play a best of five. So there's an attrition game that starts to come into play. That'll be a new test for them. But, hey, they've showcased that they can play across a multitude of maps, including beating teams on their preferred maps overall through the veto stage. So two games really do look like they are a complete squad right now. And now we have to start talking about that lower bracket. As you saw, a two game, they didn't knock AK out, just down. But we have to figure out who is going to be playing up against AK. And it's M80 and Galores in that lower bracket fighting to not get eliminated, to try and fight another day. Two teams that when we talk about them, we had a lot of expectations coming into this. And in the group stages, M80, they lived up to that. And they're finding themselves in a really sticky situation already. I mean, Roy, obviously you can look at this broadcast and be like, oh, NA bias. But even the other teams were saying that M80 was so strong coming into this and they're in the lower bracket. What happened? <laughs> I think there's something that transcends the NA bias, okay? It's facts. And the fact is M80 has only <laughs> lost two matches in the beginning of split two. And ever since then, they've gone on a complete win streak. And that entire win streak ended yesterday so i think i think the numbers and the facts speak for themselves that this team is definitely not a type of team that is going to struggle two times in a row so if you're m80 right now they are historically a type of team that whenever they take harsh losses they're very quick to bounce back and they're very easily the type of team that will recover mentally and come in strong for their for their matchups something i want to talk about with m80 of course when a team wins or loses normally you can scour the socials and see what they're thinking and there is a lot of little tidbits from the team um Xander had tweeted that there is the verse the worst versions of everyone that showed up but it was the one that from koala noob that i wanted to highlight first off how much it blows how off they were today but then also quoting last year was like this too looking at this lower bracket run mm. incoming and we even had featured a tweet from koala yesterday talking about how they're a team that's able to be coming back. And yeah, for three members of this team shift last year, they were in a similar position. We won't talk about the fact that they lost in the end to the team that knocked them down to the lower bracket. That's something we can discuss down the line. But it's a team that is very familiar with this comeback and have very strong mentals. Definitely a strategy. Talk about your bugaboo, like right on the TL, right? Like <laughs> hey, he's year. leaking everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, I, I said at the top of the show, M80 looked lazy yesterday. They didn't look like they were well prepared for a squad in 2G that had done their homework. And it felt a lot like M80 were coming out saying, we'll just play these guys the same way we did last time. There was nothing really truly innovative about what they were trying to do. They're, to be fair, they, they didn't really make too many great mistakes. It was just they were getting beat and they didn't have a backup plan. That's what I think when I talk about kind of being a little bit lazy. However, I think it was a major wake up call. And today has to be different. Yeah, absolutely. And just a kind of like a quick TLDR on M80's performance throughout this specific tournament, right? Is they have been struggling individually. They've all made tweets about it. They're all saying, oh, yeah. I'm not playing to, you know, to the level that I'm supposed to be playing at. This is nowhere near our peak. We're playing at a 7 out of 10. Like, this is something that they're, that's coming out of their... I mean, they're leaking everything on the TL. But it, it's true. And I think they got tested on that yesterday where they were getting held on choke points and they just weren't yeah. able to win out the team fights. And like, yeah, you can have the most elaborate strategy. But at the end of the day, if, if you're the type of team that can't win the team fights, if you cannot shoot your gun, you are not going to win. It's an FPS game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, talking a little bit of what we got to see coming into this, I mean, Chip, yeah. you love numbers. You I love, love numbers. some good numbers, so take us through it. I'm no math of a scientist, but the good news is you've got things like ChatGPT who can make algorithms for you, and when you punch the buttons, that comes out with these results. In Stage 2 of Finals, M80 were dominant. Top 2 across a lot of really key, what I like to consider to be kind of linchpin moments inside of maps. When you're at a full buy, how well do you play when you're at a disadvantage? And then are you taking full advantage when you do find yourself up on the eco? They were great at it in Stage too. Now you look at it across what they've done in Ascension, the differences in the overall statistics and their win rate are miserably bad. They're only winning just barely half of their full buy rounds. And when they're playing up against an opponent, when they are at full purchase, they're not even winning 50% of them, which is not good whatsoever considering the teams that are still alive here in this particular tournament. And yes, they are getting better at winning at an eco disadvantage, but let's face it, they've had to play from the back foot a lot, especially throughout what was yesterday 
yesterday. So it's going to be one of those things for M80. They need to get themselves back into fighting form when they are at full strength and try to create more advantages because they simply put did not have that yesterday versus 2G, save a couple of moments. And that's what I think has really hurt this squad against the Brazilian and Lightam counterparts that they face, whether it be through groups or yesterday in their opening round matchup. You're talking about getting back to full strength, and I know during groups the team was struggling with food poisoning, and yesterday I'm hoping is a little bit of a little bit more oddball, but Roy, going into this, it was a rough showing yesterday. Yeah, they definitely were struggling, and I think a, a part of, like for me, the part of it that they were struggling the most on were their openers. They really, that was supposed to be one of their strengths. They're, they're supposed to have the system where Koala is getting all of the support that they need, right? But in that matchup, they went negative on their openers. It's one of the first times throughout the entire tournament that they've gone that negative, and it was, I think it was seven kills overall in the negative in terms of openers that has been a sort of key victory for m80 and it's not something that they did that they displayed very well yesterday yeah. so if it, i mean the way i see it is the kind of the, the blueprints already been formed into how to defeat m80 right it's to like challenge them early don't let them run their game plan and many teams have ran that exact blueprint and have gotten pretty good success versus m80 yeah maybe some of the matches weren't closed out and none of the matches got closed out but the one yesterday finally did and i think teams are looking to that and they're seeing like okay we could just recreate what they did to be m80 and we could just kind of just copy them bingo yeah, that's definitely something a little bit of an uphill battle looking at this lower bracket. And the, that first little thing that they have to be triumphing, well, as he put it on the other end and looking at Glory. So, I mean, when we're looking back at the success that a team has had throughout their own season and everything else, this was a team that we had a lot of high expectations going into this with. And we have gotten to see some individual highlighted performance from the team ship. But overall, in a whole, especially with yesterday and the inability to be closing out games, it's something that you need to be turning it up now or you're going to find yourself eliminated. Yeah, I, I think, you know, how do we categorize Galaris? I, in my mind, it was they weren't comfortable in the land setting initially. The map three loss to TSM followed up by an 0-2 map count versus all Knights in the group stage was like, what are we talking about? How are these guys not dominating these squads? Then all of a sudden, you find yourself with the back up against the wall. You're 0-3 in groups. You have to win your final two, and you need to do it convincingly to get to playoffs. And wouldn't you know it, they provide that. A convincing 2-0 versus 2-G, and they follow up by doing the same thing versus Rada. And then you get to a point where, yeah, you're playing up against an all-nights team again. I always say within a week period, it's hard to beat the same team twice. There were a couple of great moments that they were able to possibly close out both matches but it definitely felt like there's a fog mentally about well, we're up 12 to 4 how are we not winning this game and it just got <laughs> to a point where this avalanche was just out of control for him it, it was a little tough to watch and as much as we praised ak then there is also the discussion on what went wrong over onto the other end and there is a tweet i wanted to pull up me you know from Arango and kind of the performances yesterday because i mean Going into this, we can critique, we can say what we want, but I think the biggest thing comes from the players themselves. And this one is quite harsh. No comments, pathetic, shameful, reset for tomorrow. I mean, those are some really, really harsh words, but I do think when we look at Galoris that, yeah, they did fall a little short of the expectations going into this. And Roy obviously falling very short of the own expectations the team has for themselves. Yeah, I mean, this is just a reminder. This is the number one seed coming out of Brazil, right? They've looked dominant in their region. They came into this tournament. At, like Schiff said, they, they did not have a great start. They were not very comfortable with the environment, but they did heat up and they have been heating up. And even in yesterday's matches, they had two map leads on both maps that they just were not able to close out. So I think... Massive I, ones. Yeah, I don't even think they're playing poorly. I just think that something is, is sort of dysfunctional with their defense size because that their attacks have looked impeccable. I think one of some of the highest in the tournament, like there, there's really nothing wrong strategically. It's just on defense, there is some kind of breakdown and they just really... I think as long as they solve that problem, they're good to go. They don't really need to stress out too much. I mean, that's a pretty big problem to try and be solving when it's like a day turnaround and all of a sudden you're going up against what has been deemed one of the favorites of the tournament here, Shift. Mm. I mean, that is a that is a big flaw in M80. I mean, they have a team that if they can be on peak performance today, they'll punish those flaws. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The other side of this, and I know that we kind of put M80's eco statistics on blast comparing their stage two to what they've done in Ascension. If you were to rank these two teams next to each other based on how they're playing at full strength, both of them are underneath par. So, or that's, they're, I guess, over par if you're a golf fan that's not where you want to be. Whatever. They're just not meeting the metric that they need to and what they had done previously. So, that's where they need to improve. They've been great in the pistol, but now they have to find a way to do it at full strength, especially like Roy said on the defense. 
And Roy, I know you were cooking up a little something. We were talking about number shift at his time with the numbers, but there's something you wanted to present to the class here too. Yeah, I think it's pretty interesting actually. As soon as we get the graphics up, oh man, you guys are good at your jobs. Um, so if, if you look very quickly at Galoris's attack percentages, again, that is where they're finding most of their success. But M80, aside from Sunset, that kind of reduced their defense rate, M80's defenses have been their strong suits, right? This stat is a little skewed because their, their sunset has kind of destroyed their statistics, but overall their defense has been impeccable. And if Galoris is, it's kind of, it's a tailish oldish time, right? Where it's like, okay, you have a team on one hand who's the unstoppable force, and now you have M80 who has very strong defense sides. I think that's a recipe for a pretty interesting matchup. Yeah, this will be quite interested i mean when you're talking about m80 and the fact that some of their statistics have been ruined by sunset i think that kind of brings a a stark reminder of how the map pool can go potentially wrong for them today and i want to remind people as well obviously we did get an opportunity to see all the teams face off against each other in groups and for an m80 that was undefeated chip this was a team that actually really tested them this was a result that it really easily could have been M80's first loss in that group stage, which was crazy. Yeah, three map series, overtimes, 13-11s, uh, the other maps. I, I mean, it really is one of those situations that this goes either way. Um, in, in particular, you kind of look at how this series went, and it was an even pistol split as well. So this really was decided when you had full yeah. gun rounds in the mix. So, yeah, it definitely uh, yeah. could have gone either way last time, and it very well could be the same thing here today. Well, that was the last time these two teams met, but what about going into today the map picks and bans this is crucial everything on the line and with maps that have maybe i mean both of them traded their map picks last time around mm. this will be so interesting to get into m80 vetoing the buy and absolutely no, surprise. no surprises absolutely no surprises i don't even know why we talk about that i don't know yep. why i'm bringing it up galora is picking up the sunset one that was so close mm. the last time Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, it makes sense. The first two vetoes are your worst maps out of the picture. Galoris, I think, picking Sunset. Yeah, they beat M80 here in their last series like we just saw. But I think they're also saying, yo, look what two game just did to these boys. Yeah. If we can just stop them from retaking and put them onto one point of entry, yep. we can dominate them again. But Ascent in the mix is definitely a wild card pick here. M80 have not played this in a while. And I love the fact that they're going something that there's not a lot of film on them on. Yeah, just, okay, whoa. Sunset, it makes complete sense to me, right? Because as we were saying, M80 has shown the most holes on that map, and it's been a pretty good map for Glorious, to be honest. Second map is pretty interesting because this has been kept secret from M80 this entire time. They have not shown their scent, and the fact that they first picked it is kind of a testament to, I think, a, a level of prep that they're coming into because that's it. Like, you need to pull out all the cards that you can pull out. You're, you're in the lower bracket. There, there's nothing yeah. to hide anymore, right? And then yeah. finally, the third map. Again, it's another map that we have not seen from M80, and we have seen Galoris play. I mean, looking at the Ascent, even if we haven't gotten to see it through Ascension, it was something that through challengers, we got to see M80 work some of their opponents on. I mean, when we're looking at a couple of the other teams that were in contention to be the second NA team, I mean, Oxygen, MXS were very much so in the mix. And this was a map that M80 definitely worked them on, including even just a 13-1 victory over MX, um, over Oxygen, excuse me. This was definitely a little bit of times back, but when Ascent has been in the map pool for so long here, Shift, I think the fact that, yeah, maybe it's been two months. Ascent's been how long in our pool? A million and a half years? Like, this is strong, so I'm excited for this. They also get to build some vibes with the Yoru in back-to-back -back <laughs> maps is something that, you know, you go to expect. So Koala Noob can kind of find a way to meet an immediate response to his own tweet and just come out and play well. Uh, that is going to be, I think, part of the success rate, though, for at least this first map. Uh, offensively, they've done really well, using dimensional drift to essentially guarantee rounds. The question's going to be, how do they stylistically play in the second half on defense? Are are they going to be more contest heavy and not just default to playing for retake where they got punished heavily yesterday? It's going to be a close one and a series that was so close last time around. And the two teams now fighting for their lives. Favorites from both regions coming on out and only one can make their way through. So I have Ooh, gearing up for this, I am so excited. In the sunset, too, I think there's so much potential for this to maybe go wrong. I mean, Alaris, I mean, yes, they're strong on this, but this was so close last time. Yeah, right? I mean, 13-11s is means like one round gone differently and the result is completely different, right? So it, it really is a super tight matchup. But uh, one player that I do would like to, uh, I would like to highlight is uh, Luxo, right? He's been statistically one of the highest st statted players in the tournament. He's playing an off-roll controller slash sentinel for, for the Brazilian side, Galoris. And he, he has been a very strong player who 
and he didn't really perform that well last game, but he's almost, in his entire history of matches, has almost never performed poorly two times in a yeah. row. He's always bounce back and him and Seto the, the kind of dynamic that they have where they have this very flashy very well set up duelist in the front lines and they also have this like very high impact player kind of doing his own thing on the side has been a, a very good dynamic for the Brazilian side and I'm really hoping that that's going to be in action today because they're going to the need other, it. The other part about this is you can immediately look at the mirror matchup on the other side Xander did not have a good day yesterday True. so two of your star performers likely running controllers are going to be, I think, some of the spotlighted players here. Yeah, we're going to be kind of taking a gas just a little bit by watching Koala to see what he can do, seeing what players like Sato can do when he's on the duelist. But I think you're right to kind of really call out Luke Show, who has been kind of the secondary duelist or secondary fragger for this Galarist team, and then look at Xander of being the secondary guy mm -hmm. kind of back behind Koala Noob. So it very well may come down to what those support controllers can bring to the table today. I mean, both players, especially Xander, have been people that we've been talking about a lot through groups as just the backbones of their team. So to see less than stellar performances yesterday, I mean, it sucks that it's like as simple as this, but whoever's just going to show up better on the day is simply going to get it. Both teams really not performing up to their own standards yesterday. At the worst timing, yeah. after especially a great M80 in groups. I mean, right, that's a, that's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, definitely. And reminder that... Xander is the IGL, and I do have this belief that it, like the later you get into a tournament, the, the steeper the IGL tax becomes, right? Like, it's a lot more focus. <laughs> it's a lot more prep heavy, right? And you're like, okay, now we're in lower bracket, and that his brain's going to be on overload. So, like, if he pops off and calls well in this series, he's the GOAT. Like, yeah, there's just no question about it, because... <laughs> From experience coming from a former IGL, the level of calling, the, the foot, like, like kind of like the attention to detail as a caller gets a lot more intensive the later you go because of how much mind games there are and how many things you have to call outside of your comfort zone and for your team's comfort zone while still trying to win gets much more difficult later on. Especially yesterday when we saw a 2G that was so well prepped. I mean, center must have been working overtime and that's a tough spot, but hopefully with a good night of rest and hitting the books, that everyone can bounce back today. And still, we're looking at the who will win the meter in the chat. Very heavy on that M80 what? focus. No. That's a, I'm a little surprised. That's strong. <laughs> really <laughs> surprised? Are you kidding me? How are you surprised by this? 80 to 20 <laughs> on a North American stream. Wow, that's crazy. Wow. <laughs> Chat's probably spamming. I, I saw Valen in chat earlier. I bet he's out there hitting it hard with the M80. He's just spam, 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 spam. I mean, I mean, they've definitely been in tough positions before and three of the five last year in this same spot and being able to push on through and for M80, one of the favorites for this. I mean, it's all up to this. This is a whole season for both of these teams too. Obviously we got to follow M80 a little bit more closely, but for Glorious, they also came off of a stellar season and to go up against then one of the favorites that's been deemed by the tournament. I, this is... Man, I can absolutely not wait for this shift. No, I mean, well, you're going to have to, Sierra. You're going to you're gonna have to wait a little bit. Wait a little bit. <laughs> it's going to have to happen. I, I want to kind of go back to the conversation since we seem to have it. You know, again, we talk about, you know, Xander and Luke Show not playing particularly well yesterday. Here's the thing. They were the top fraggers. When they were played last time around, Luke Show won 77 and yep. 53 and 16 and 5 in first blood battles. Insane. Koala Noob on the other side was Ooh. 71 and 49. So those two players were plus 24, plus 22 respectively. But yeah, if you're a Gallerus, you want that Luke Show to show up here again. <laughs> you need him to show up here again. It's not a debate at that point. When you're looking and you're talking about the flashy players of this team, Shadow just being such an exceptional duelist. You need the backbone there too, and you need Luke Show to really be showing up here. And I mean, when we're looking at the sunset, where he was able to just have such a stellar performance last time when it was so close, a 13 to 11, Roy. Mm -hmm. If Luke Show doesn't show up, I'm worried for galleries here. Yeah, we talk about flashy players. Luke Show's one of them. But what about flashing players like Nismo, ah. for example, a player ah. that plays on flashes? He's also been a little bit quiet. He's ha he's definitely had his moments where he has shined. But I think overall, he has been playing below expectations, considering that, you know, last year he was uh, in top contention for, I think, number five in terms of overall stats the entire year, not even just one tournament, the entire year. And so, like, to, to, from my expectations, at least from where I'm sitting, I feel like Nismo really needs to step up right here because he is the duo that he has with Koala Noob, the sort of synergy that they've created that, you know, it's a big deal. All right. Well, the walk is about to, start, about to get started. And let's head to the stage.
la derecha del stage con el cinturón de Norteamérica. Dios que sangra, pero que sabe que tropezón no es caída. Llega M80. The favorites of NA of Ascension now finding themselves here in the lower bracket. It's a team that has that comeback potential. They've seen their spot here before, but now they have to be showing up here, Shift. It was a rough showing yesterday, but smiles on their face, and they're never ones that are down for long. Confidence from Nismo is key. Trying to get this this uh, in-home crowd on their side, but coming out with confidence and coming from Nismo in particular is great. Pela vida no campeonato, começando mais uma campanha milagrosa rumo ao título. Faça um barulho para Galori. to a map three and falling just a little bit short, but a team that has been able to perform throughout their season. A duelist we've talked about so much and a strong backbone of the team here. I mean, if they can get off on the right footing here, Roy, this could be such a close map and there is the potential for an even bigger upset than the one that we saw yesterday. Uh, I mean, I'm not even sure we can call this an upset, to be honest. This is the battle mm -hmm. of the Giants. These are the number one seeds from 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 Brazil, the number one seed from North America. The level of expectations that I have and everyone else should have is that these players are about to pop off. They want it really badly. It's come down to this. None of them were expected to be in the lower bracket so early, and now it's do or die for both of these teams. And the Blacklight Agent Select, since we have such recent tape over here on Sunset, we haven't necessarily been too surprised here in the playoffs by any of the agents, any of the picks. Koala Yoru, Sero the Neon, the supporting cast here, Shift. Yeah, and again, focus towards Xander on the M80 side in terms of how much are they going to try to get him involved on the defense in particular when we're on the second half. The other part about this is, again, you look to Xander to kind of be the guy to initiate off of trying to find some weird timings, whether that be through mid or around kind of the pinches on the sites themselves from this attacking half. So focus towards Xander for me. On the other side, Sato on a Neon. Anytime you see it, especially coming out of Brazil or Latin America, you have to be worried about it. Let's see how much he pops off today. And I'm looking at both of these breaches as well. Nismo is able to step up a lot in the later stages of that group stage. And with so many assists for the team and Orango, despite maybe a result they weren't like necessarily happy with yesterday, really being able to put together a little performance of his own. So lot riding on this first map of sunset it was so close last time around and this is elimination map one of the series and it's time to head on over to lemon kiwi and vance to take you through north america's last hope against the heart of brazil m80 the favorites of ascension against galores one of the most underestimated teams here and it's last life it's lower brackets do or die vance yeah, that's it. We, we started the day talking about the number two seeds going head to head between uh, all Knights uh, and their opponents here to make it to the grand finals. It was 2G that made it. And now it's the number one seeds of the region going into an elimination matchup. So now one of these teams is going home. Thankfully, though, if you're looking for the Cancer Bowl teams, they both look energized. They both look that they were hyping each other up, especially Nismo is coming out to play. I'm hoping to see that he's going to step up to the plate in terms of his util, but also his aim that I know and that we know that he's good for. But overall, this is a map that has been always shaky for this whole Ascensions tournament for M80 on Sunset. Thankfully, they start off here on the attack side where they're much stronger here at a 55% win rate versus the 42 defensive win rate where when they played against 2G yesterday, they were red. Now they have a chance to dictate the pace and they have a chance to also control the potential aggression that could, could be coming out of Seto with this Neon pick. Mm -hmm. And yeah, going to Sunset first. Yeah, slam dunk. Uh, it must be a bit of PTSD for M80 because that's the first map they slipped on, slipped up on against 2G, one that humbled them. Their first loss is series-wise in Ascension. But Galorith, I said they're underestimated because they all slip by into playoffs and 
eighth place in their region and then go on to win playoffs and make their way to Ascension. That's why I think everyone needs to watch out for Galoris. And they were so mad about their performance yesterday. And now it's a big wake up call against North America's greatest. Galoris will hold the wall here on defense, but Trip set up towards the elbow side with Rude watching a short M80 taking their time. It's interesting setup though as well for Galoris where they're setting up a tr double trap into B main with a double stun, but no cameras really to watch that area. So you kind of have to jiggle and give your position away, but it doesn't matter. M80 is working towards the A side instead where Evil Kick and his teammates are playing a little bit more passively here. Ruse just holding the angles and waiting for the team to come back to flood in. Oh, Evil Kick gets all this time to use shock bolts to maybe drop players out of safe positions. The plant still happens and M80 Playing out of sight, out of mind, off the flash from maybe Koala Noob. And it does hit Evil Kick, but with the smoke coming up, it's not that M80 can engage off of it, but rather press this retake back. And here's Galoris, of course, Gecko flashes from BCJ, absolutely nullifying Sato, who still manages to pick up a double kill, while M80 are left with just Nismo. And not the quickest of starts for M80. A lot of respect given to Galoris, a lot of time for them to set up and it's Galoris with the defuse. Yeah, M80 looked like they had a setup to try to counteract in terms of the counter fault line recon dart flashes that would come out on the defense. And it was a setup here from Kuala Noob in the back of the generator, setting up with the Jordan Gilbert flashbang dance to throw that Yoru flash up and then hopefully counteract and counter uh, counter flash their opponents floating in. But unfortunately the timing wasn't there and too much here for Galoris and too much accounted for uh, behind that flash to try to fight back in. It looks pretty good for Galoris to start though in this piss around. A map where they beat M80 13 to 11 in that opening match where M80 won that series two to one. An opportunity to go for revenge and a great start at that. Clone take care of the trips. M80, the army marches on. Galoris see it coming and Luke at least gets two for his troubles. A wingman gets the plant down. M80 with smokes. It's dividing the, the site in half with also smoking off the top of the site. Galoris droning in. Should spot BCJ. And he's already low. He's throwing a molly to slow this down, but now he's hit by paranoia and all, him, all Galoris have to do is finish off what Rude has set up for them. Very good execution on the retakes by Galoris. Yeah, and at least now for M80. You saw that they went for full classics, a fast TP on top of that for Kola Noob, just to try to set the pacing and open things up here and allow for them to get into the site, at least for a plant. So that will breathe, uh, bring the Econ up. The thing is right now for Kola Noob is, are we going to try to bring this operator out on the attack side too? This is not unfamiliar territory for Kola Noob to play that on uh, the attack side, but it's also trying to figure out if you want to use an op on the attack against these strong retakes that uh, Sato is currently doing with the rest of Galoris uh, on these flood retakes, at least for now. They has, we haven't really seen any indication of Galoris really want to pressure yet, potentially in this bonus round that they currently have. We get here in a round where Kuala Noob will definitely have a rifle to start up with. And the desk pointed out how M80 work with eco advantages, or at least having better weaponry M80, it's the post plant. How can they extend out of the site? They kind of feel all crunched up and bunched up and Galoris, the Util hits them every single time. But now the ball is in M80's court. Very slow approaches, very different from the 2G all, ma uh, all nights match we had earlier. But Luke watches over, not really getting much. Drone through mid, that gets shot. There's something going on at mid. Galoris can still just take their time. Yeah, right now they only spot net Case alone three. here towards middle, and we also saw the smoke towards the B main, so you're sort of thinking that they were going for a late uh, B hit with a late lurk on middle, but as you're given the, the tell already on your Cypher at the very beginning, it is going to be a reposition around the map that gets denied. Sato, oh my god! The C3 still goes for the like old slide play? Oh, he... he he, he yeah. thought he was built like that. M M80 humbled him quick. But with the early two rounds, I don't blame Galoris for going for these kind of ego challenges. M80, it's a first blood in their favor this time. Xander brought down a 25 HP still. Wingman has to play in 11 seconds left. Evil kick, Yorango, do nothing about it. 
on a good foot. They have the weaponry advantage. It's just up to Rude, and he's got a backstab, but M80 react for the trade. So M80, the bonus. Definitely dangerous there with 22 seconds left to go for a full pivot back through middle, back towards the B side. But I think that was also important because we had the early tell where Net was currently lurking. He was still holding the area and figuring that he wasn't really being pressured yet since he got spotted by the Aljone, that there was an opportunity to pivot back while he's watching that cross. So it gives a chance here for MED to group up, but they walked into the full Cypher utility. But thankfully, they are running a composition that has a wingman to goes for, that goes for the plant. You're pushing in with the wingman, and you're making sure that you have, no matter what, always an extra body to fight because the uh, there's you don't have to have anybody um, committed into planting is what I'm trying to get to. And MED was able to trade off perfectly in the end. Although, uh, with that said, they won that round with two players alive. Both of them at half HP remaining. I think that was both on Nismo and Qualanum. Either or. They have to go for quite an expensive buy within the next round here. Where that was only a bonus for Galoris. <laughs> Someone on M80 wearing sunglasses. I love it. The BCJ. Calm, but also, maybe the lights are bright on stage. And this is a, a different uh, environment that M80 are used to competing in. Nabal did not commit to a site before they have an advantage to work with getting that first blood and then trying to execute so that worked out a bit better for m80 and you know the the rifles <laughs> give that advantage as well now we got a technical pause hopefully everything is okay this time there was a lot of technical pauses on m8 uh during the m80 match yesterday so uh, during whole ascension, <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't that matter. as well. <laughs> uh, uh, at least, at least, if anything here for for what happened on that previous round, what was good here from M80 was staying as a group despite going into the trap setup here of the two players anchored in for Galorius within this B site. It could have been very dangerous if they didn't have the right util to really blind those opponents in the back of the site. Uh, they probably could have lost Spike. They could have lost on time, and that could have been a whole different story that we could talk about here during this technical pause. But if anything. Uh, what was not so great from what I saw here from Galoris' side is the Sato being out in the open, kind of just activating his overdrive out in the open at that point too without real support coming in from his team. Uh, I didn't see too much utility happening around him that could allow for him to at least get one uh, for his troubles. And unfortunately, he gets picked off and that really opens up the, the map here for M80 to work with and thins out the defense because you're not set up for an immediate trade. You're not set up for util to stun then those two players within the A side have to be a little bit further back. They have to play more reactively. And unfortunately, playing off reaction lags you behind for the retake on M80's Pulse Plant. Um, but they've done mm. good enough damage at least. Uh, and also for M M80, they have to realize too, when they pivoted back from middle to B, that Rude actually pushed all the way out towards B main. So keep it into account how Galoris could stay kind of proactive in the reactions of M80. M80 still has to be um, on point throughout the chaos, not only through utility, but understanding where their opponents could be positioned. If not, this might be a, a Galoris strong defensive side to start. M80 were already on point catching Sato, which I feel like the Sato was a litmus test of, <laughs> hey, guys, I already have my ult after two rounds. What's up? <laughs> kind of play. And... <laughs> I love that. And, the, you know, this is a very passionate region, Brazil. And, you know, there's only just M80 from North America. It feels like against the world. And everyone looks at M80 being the only undefeated team from groups. A huge, you know, touted as the favorites, taking their first loss. And not a very close loss either uh, yesterday. So got humbled quick, but... Now to return to Sunset, there's not a lot of turnaround time, right, between yesterday and today to, to fix all the issues that M80 experienced. But Sunset has been a weak point for them. So agreed, see agreed. how they turn that around. Yeah, the results so far from M80 really kind of keeps you stressed as a, as a North American fan where, you know, there's going to be a lot of bandwagoners or just people that are just going to be 
very anxious watching the development of Vitmi Edie throughout this Ascension tournament because if you look back at the records that they've had so far, they went undefeated in groups, right? They went 5-0, and zero, but so many of those games went into a third map, a 13-11, an overtime win, an overtime loss, etc., etc. And then once you finally made it into playoffs, you had a week of practice, a week uh, of a break to just reset to get into the Final Four and potentially just storm and run through this this playoff bracket they got dismantled by 2g on a defensive side so i don't think it's necessarily on a lack of uh, preparation because for sure this is a team that has a lot of prep and a lot of grit around the coaching staff around happy and gunter and also around the tenacity and also the experience of this team to be prepared for this matchup but this is the first time this tournament that not only did they lose they lost fairly badly against 2g and you're hoping to see here this matchup where M80 would be able to bounce back with confidence in the lower brackets. And so far, it hasn't worked too well for their for their pistol and eco. Uh, but the eco doesn't matter. They just wanted to go for a plant. But at least our gun round has some sort of bravado. We're just hoping to see that this could continue on. If not, again, this is it would be an unfortunate story for M80 because this would be a second time now uh, for this roster that they've made it to the Ascension playoffs and that they might fall short. They might even fall shorter than they did last year when they lost against the guard here in the grand finals who are now G2 in the Americas. And this time they might even just lose in the lower, uh, lower bracket against the number one seed of Galoris. That would be heartbreaking for them, but huge for a team like Galoris to to advance to beat the favorites and after a, a season where Galoris uh, like I'll reiterate they they squeaked by into the playoffs of their region and won in playoffs they were eighth place in the regular season and won that's why Galoris are in ascension you cannot underestimate them and like the stats said Galoris's pistol is deadly their retakes it was clinical and M80 you thought we were maybe going to go to Icebox, maybe even Lotus, and that's not available. We're going to have to see how M80 flip around their sunset based on a pretty crushing loss yesterday. There may have been more factors involved, you know, with the technical pauses or something internally. Who knows? But I I've never seen a team like M80 like not be able to turn around uh, a game like this. For and, sure. You know, they took the round, so. Yep. Yeah, this is still a great storyline for, for Glorious as well, even though they come in as that number one seed. Even before they became Glorious, they were just a, a mixed team, a free agent team looking for an opportunity to get represented. Even Glorious, if you're looking back at the a roster before them, they it was actually a whole different roster a whole, uh, that represented this organization. And now you have an opportunity here to see some some great Valorant coming out from this team, from star players like Sato, Urango, and Luxo. Luxo, yes, maybe not the, the best of games that he did yesterday, but overall, uh, throughout the whole Ascension tournament, he had a pretty decent showing, especially against M80. Uh, so there is an opportunity for, to watch these players have uh, an opportunity to, to ascend, maybe not in this organization, but also just in general with how good things have been. We have a lack of IGLs uh, in Valorant so far, and I wouldn't be surprised if Arango has an opportunity, but... We'll stop with the podcast for now. We'll focus on the game. We get back into round number four. Galoris in a gun round against M80. First contact now towards the market and forced the pullback. But the crash comes in for M80 to hit towards B. And the bait was bitten on that Koala Noob clone thrown out. Galoris having to gift over market control and kind of dance around the, the smokes at the top of sight to see can Galoris strike at M80 when they are lacking, when they aren't unaware. But so far, M80 have picked up first blood, punishing Galoris on an un... not united front, I should say, as your auto has a free market side that was unsmoked. And M80 had no idea that multi killed from the side, and it's a defuse for Galoris. And an easy spray for Orongo for those two players of M80 that basically just crouched in front of each other and allowed Orongo again we, we, I just mentioned him, uh, an IGL at such a young age, and also being able to frag out as much as he could for this team. And he's able to win that round there, single-handedly, must I say, for the team of Galoris to take that round. Because the desk mentioned something that M80 needed to do, be a little bit more proactive, not give a chance here for Galoris to really be set up for these flood retakes. And I loved it. They pushed out through their smoke. They fought back on the platforms, but because they're flipping the map on over the B side, they forget the front B main. 
and they get punished for it. I almost forgot the thrash even happened because <laughs> yeah. Maney used that and the post plant, it's sitting ducks. It's not playing through main. Oh it's life. not extending out of the site. It's still trying to get organized. And look, who's checking generator? Uh, Luke? It's popping off. Koala Noob at least spits back, but M80, uh, these rounds are still ramping up, and it's Galoris taking full advantage. Now in a 2v1 against Koala Noob at 45. It's a tough one for M80 to scoot back. Yeah, and he's held on his timer right now with this gate crash. He's hoping within this timer that he isolate a 1v1, get that pick and TP out, but that spike is out in the open. If anything, the gate, gate crash is gone, but he still has an opportunity to just move in and pick up the spike, and he'll do so with the dimensional drift. But he's going to move into uncharted territory. Again, once he comes out and he moves into the site, they're going to hear the TP come out and look at them already looking towards middle. It's just going to wait it out, trying to aim battle them. If anyone can clutch, it's Koala Noob. 30 seconds left. Four kills for the ace. Teleport left behind. Still 45 oh HP God. and the biggest debate. Evil Kick now has to catch up. I mean, he almost got wall back there too. That was dangerous, but we'll take it. The, re the rotate's still there and Evil Kick Five still has full planted. util. Anything but a new band, the ace for Koala Noob all by himself to keep M80 within one. Oh my God, what a play by Koala Noob towards the end because of I was talking about the uncharted territory where he would not know where his opponents would be at. He makes the noise, he isolates that 1v1, and then he actually brings the paranoia onto the defensive side of Galoris on that 1v1 against Evil Kick. But that was going to be a round that if it wasn't going to be for Koala Noob, we, I was going to be talk, I was going to talk about how, unfortunately, not... I was going to say not as good, but I'll just call it bad. I'll just call it like it is. Trying to get into this B site, using the aftershot to try to clear out towards generator, but not enough utility to really make sure that you flush out outside of that site. So I think that was Luke show that was holding towards that Jenny. If it wasn't for, for Koala Noob, that was going to be a beautiful setup from the Paranoia and Luke show coming up to get these kills, prevent the plant. But thankfully, Koala Noob had enough kills to get the, uh, the Dimensional Drift available and to save that round there for M80. But... That was on a lower buy. The economy should now start building up as well for M80. And for Galoris to potentially still have a moment where they could have some sort of a half buy. I haven't had a chance to look at the econ before we went into this other tech pause. And what a momentum killer too. Like, hold off an ace. That round looks so chalk for M80 as you described. They, they walked in not covering all their angles, especially the box on the site. You get multi-killed. And then Koala Noob not only trades those two, but goes on to win the entire round. Talk about heavy lifting. Talk about, talk about how you're getting iced out <laughs> by, yeah. by whatever the technical issue was or is. And that's, that's rough to not be able to kind of ride off that high. And Dolores will take a second to also shake off the, the round that should have been theirs in the first place. Yeah, if anything... Uh, coming out from a tech pause, M80 convert it into a dub. So if you come back into another tech pause and M80 gets another dub, maybe they just want to keep going with these tech pauses. But uh, to look back again to uh, Luke Show's position towards that generator, uh, you know, I harped a lot on M80's execution here towards that site. But what really helped, too, for Luke Show to get such a strong position on that left side was a one-way smoke uh, that he threw here on the short A site where he could get pinched across. So I think for M80, I, I mean, this is just standard stuff that that's usually being thrown on the defensive side that uh, prevents you from really scaling up on the short side of A. So that's why like M80 has to make sure that they leverage a lot, uh, much better utility to really not only flush out with an aftershock, but maybe that gecko is probably going to be the next best thing, if not the only thing that will be able to help you scan into the site. So you need to try to combine a little bit more uh, this breach and this gecko here into your site execs. If not, you might get caught with a lot of surprises, just like just like how Luke Show has just played previously. And we see like the little monitors on the bottom. We get a chance to see some of the replays. And I just wanted to point out that Nismo got so loud and you see him kind of half get up and start talking smack to the other side. If there's any smack talking, I swear it's coming from M80 or it's towards M80. Any Sam team playing against M80, they want to beat down North America. They want to beat down the favorites of this tournament. Shut them up once and for all. 
We'll see how this tech pause has shifted the energy as it's a save for Galoris. Sato testing out, getting vision. M80 will head back. Sato makes it out with only 60 HP remaining. They were trying to go for just early info. They're using him as a recon dart because, you know, you have Evil Kick just playing on the other end, trying to watch out towards middle and B main. But again, it, it's another one of those moments where Galoris did try to have a Neon peak first, but not too much util behind it, unless it was a second layer. If M80 really wanted to try to fight against this, that's when the paranoia would come out here for Brood. But instead, it's a bait and switch. The charge! What? Not even a single shot came out! Xander is him! Jeez, to deal with all those problems by himself exactly and Elbow, while the rest of M80 funnel on the other side. But M80, it's never been the site executes. It's been the post plants that have hurt M80 the most. And now, they have the numbers advantage. They've doubled what Galores can do, what? but Evil Kick evens things up. The drone to check out the site, making sure no one is inside the smoke. We're seeing the both the remaining Fury. players of M80 near elbow side. The Hunter's Fury to line up the pins for Evil Kick to strike down. But now he's by himself with the Sheriff. M80 not laying back against that Hunter's Fury. Now the spike dwindling away with M80 having vision. A high low, but not able to switch out the gun in time. Evil Kick denied his ace. The super high low. And what a nice try, though, by Evil King. The Collat, again, another one of those moments where M80 lined up against the battles and got collated by the Sheriff. And it had to come down to, once again, individual play, this time from Xander, somebody that has been talked about here by I Hold Shift on the desk, that he could definitely step up to the plate, just like Luke Show did in previous matches, and turn things around here for the team. Another one of those moments, with, if, if it wasn't going to be for one of those players, from Kuala Noob on the previous to this time, Xander... We would be talking about a different storyline now for Dolores. Dolores' advantage. But that hurt the Econ. This is a buy here for M80 that would put them into an Eco if they lose this against Dolores. Same thing for Dolores at this point. So you're looking at a very important swing round. Ooh, and a swinging right as they cross mid. M80 look both ways and still have warm bodies to spare. One man Three, advantage yes. from the shadows to check Case out B. To try and get behind the defense if they were still on site. Luke, unobscured, will still fall, get six feet under, and it's rude in a 1v3. Spike planted. And they know about his push towards the B main before. They don't have to chase after it, but they have a trip watching everything, so it should be okay here for M80. Now the M80 post plants, it's, it's easier when the numbers favor you. Seeing to force out engagements. Before the plants happen, Mady have looked better on offense. And Rude just going to decide to save that weapon based on where the economy or where the economy currently is. Not wanting to reveal his position, obviously teleporting past it. We'll go into the next round with an M80 round lead. And it's hard for uh, this type of composition here for M80 to go for this top middle splits top mid to B, top mid to A, as quickly here as you could on a Neon composition. But I like that they still went up just to make sure that they had bodies behind so they could trade at least on converging on fighting towards quad when the right side was smoked towards shot. So getting those picks, you saw some instant trades, at least on the scoreboard of what happened there that came out in favor of M80 towards the end. Another moment where they went power of numbers, just like the pistol round, just to make sure here that they guarantee coming out ahead in the amount of these fights, just very simple approach on, on M80's uh, attack side default on that previous round. <laughs> Sato read like a book. M80 covered that chapter before he even slid. A play that Sato did before and got punished again. They, uh, Galoris with their body had to go for a risky play to catch M80 before they got comfortable. Speaking of comfortable, Brute is anything but that at 11 HP. Well, Thrash. Try to just take it on the chin. Thrash looking for more though, but M80 towards another round win. Not taking too much damage. Xander holds the angle. Very patient for M80. Not getting too antsy. His evil kick. Well, all the hubbub was happening at A. 
All he has to do is wait and do his best. That respected from BCJ from using a thrash in an uh, anti-eco against Galorius here with the amount of opening kills that that MED had on that fight in front of the ace site. They wanted to make sure that they didn't run into any other shenanigans against a sheriff, but only not only that, they, they already have um, a rolling thunder left. available for Nismo. That's halfway here to his ult too, so you're trying to play ways that you could leverage more information due to the lack of scans that you can get. Your your Dizzy's only gonna get short Find range information. You don't have Prowlers, you don't have Aldrone, you don't have recon darts or a haunt to get clear scans. So you're just trying to guarantee rounds at least on your side when you know it's been cutting close against the anti-ecos, so gotta make sure here that you cross all your T's, doll all your I's, and hopefully close in the first map, because if you're looking at the rest of it, when it's do or die, Roy mentioned it, we haven't seen M80's Ascent, Abyss, or Bind. I'm pretty sure this is probably going to be something they wanted to save, thinking that it'd be going into a best of five grand finals, but instead, you're caught in a situation where your back's against the wall, tournament's on the line, and now you have to pull out all your aces. So this gives a chance now for other teams, especially All Knights and 2G that are watching from the background. If it gets to a point where M80 is able to win this series against Galorius, where now their Ascent and their Abyss could be studied for these matches. But for M80, one step at a time. It doesn't matter if you show these maps. You just got to make sure that you cross over Galorius first and stay alive in this Ascension tournament. And Galoris don't care who's on the other side of the pitch. They're a team that can punch high. They gave 2G in the regular season one of their first losses, despite 2G being the number one team. And despite Galoris losing to M80, they pushed them to the absolute limit. Every game, almost every game went 13 to 11, 13 to 11. Like, and it was back and forth. And even despite uh, bringing M80 to Sunset, one of their weaker maps, barely pulled out a win. And Galoris, they're respecting that competition. And they're working so hard to make this an easier time for themselves. And it was a hot start, but one that dwindled away and one that M80 are starting to counter shroud or just outthink. You know, for example, catching Sato on that usual left side slide on the A side. M80 will not be forced to change unless you make them. Yeah, a key word that you just mentioned there on Sato, usual, right? So he's been slotting yeah. outside for the past three rounds in these lower buys, uh, at least trying to find information, hoping to break crosshair placement or something, but he's always alone pretty much at that point. Yes, it was a little bit su of support this time around, I think from Urango behind, but overall it's just been him sliding out before any type of util really comes out here from his teammates. Uh, or if not before, not at the same time. So they're not coordinating these type of slides in the front to try to fight back against here. M80's slow default that seems to lean towards A side a lot. So they have that read on that at least. But then it comes down to how can we do things differently just to make sure that we maximize the value that the slide gets here out of Sato. And it hasn't really come out there, uh, come out there yet. But we come out of this tag timeout. There's not going to be any type of thinking of what we could do there. We're focusing on middle. There's a fault line potentially that can happen towards main. A, a quad push down towards middle while you anchor up here towards the A side. Solo cypher play from Luke Show. M80 adapt. They give him mid control. We'll just wait to see how far Galores yeah. want to push this. See post timeout what Galores can do to make either the, the defense stronger off the rip or to decide if retakes be the name of the game the way the same way Galores had the initial success in this game. Now with the door being closed, M80 are knocking it. Also just bursting it down. Galores, they want to stand on site for the M80 execute. And now it's just all this space. M80 find two kills oh, off of Galores just trying to look at market. And getting completely caught. Last player standing. Yeah. Even a run will fall. Plant comes in. Another market take towards the B site from M80. And I found it so interesting on how Galora has just let that that position of the map go. Four player walk four players rather walking down. They maybe were trying to just count on or catch Net, who's been lurking towards his middle take a lot. And then once they realized nothing was happening, they all let go of that position 
smoke towards the main, close the door, and as the door breaks, nobody's watching it, so Kualanu could just walk through. I thought there was going to be some sort of, like, dimensional drift to pinch through, but he just clearly walked up and got the kill towards Boba. This is lack of repositioning here from Galoris' side, where it's slowly, just slowly falling apart. This is not the timeout they wanted. <laughs> he got out of his box! No, Luke! He was doing a cosplay of an observer, having it a water, saw BCJ. He had a decision whether to pop out of his cage and play the mind games or just stay behind the box, but without vision. That was tough, and now Luke loses the, that gun. It hurts the economy even more. Yeah, it's not going to be looking good. They're going to be potentially, uh, potentially here on the much lower buy once again. Tempo added up from M80 side. Really dizzy being thrown and he gets instantly shot. So they know this pressure once again is coming from Galoris' side towards the A-Orb. So this time around, no shenanigans. They just go into the easy side, pivot towards B. There's still two players there though. And they're going to meet up against Evil Kick that put them on a run in the grinder last time. Oh, and the aftershock forces them out, and thankfully the clone was not the real thing, because then Luke would have been dead. And it's Galoris that helps support Luke in a position that he cannot escape from. And M80. Oh, there's a drone close by. And that waits for the moment. First team wants to emerge out of the smoke. The rolling thunder leads the way, and Galoris set aflame. And it's M80 winning every duel, but against. I mean, the weaponry that they have, you would think it's easy, but a lot of damage has been done from the Galore's side. And Luke continues to wrap around this pillar, hearing M80 slip by them. 30 seconds And they're left. switching sights. Yeah. Rude even paranoid Luke show, so Luke show can get a surprise kill with the Sheriff. So, again, unfortunate miscommunication going there for Galore's side. At least they called out that it was a potential lurk here from Fight Net coming in from the market, which is why ready. Evil King had to let go of his owl drone right away. But at least they'll pick Shadow up one weapon. Tally. They have a stinger and a vandal for a 2v2 retake. Bolt players are isolated and low, though, for M80. Now as they're finally group up, still separated. There's still a chance, though, for Galores. Who holds the angle? Nismo will re-swing. All about timing. I'm running out. Oh, that's right. Okay, what did I say? <laughs> the second M80 turn away is the second that Luke shows up. Uh, yeah, it's like, yo, you, yeah, why don't <laughs> yeah. you just defuse Rude? You could go pick up the gun after. I think that's what Luke shows trying to say. I already have my ult, bro. <laughs> Nonetheless, high fives. We still want the thrifty. <laughs> That that is oh that is just unlucky timing coming through because I mean you saw Luke just hold that angle the whole time. I'm pretty sure he saw Nismo and vice versa. So they both had, held their angles. They waited such a long time. And as I mentioned, because these two players are so isolated, far apart between each other, if you've waited that long and they still haven't pushed towards a spawn, naturally Nismo is thinking, well, both of these guys are probably gonna push towards main, so I gotta go support here with the fault line so that Xander could do something here. Uh, unfortunate there for M80, but a great play by Luke Show's patience allows Galoris to keep this game close. Dimensional drift though for M80, instantly going into a B side hit and it's open. Okay, Kuala Noob snuffing out where that Sentinel is. And as soon as M80 dropped, you could see maybe Luke go for a neural theft. There, there's at least a body for them to use in He's mid, and that's right. where Luke is heading for. Yep. AD site control. How does the post plan look? Got rid of the camera, but Luke now has full info with the neural theft activated. Market being pushed. M80 have to hold the line. And it's a 4v4. Huntress Fury from Evil Kick. And it leads the way for Galoris. That's BTJ. Use the thrash. Lock someone down. That's one less threat. As M80 just plays through main. And Galoris go one by one through the smoke. They got a little too antsy. And even numbers. Leaves Rude all by himself to hope to keep the gun, but just barely does he get out. And you got to respect it for Galoris to throw out the Hunter's Fury because of that Last neural theft. The I thought maybe you want to keep the Hunter's Fury to, to try to counteract into the last second thrash that might be 
you know, forced out of M80. But M80 in the moment that they actually got picked here by the hat. They threw an attacking side a smoke right there. Xander throws a smoke towards B main so that players cannot really flood through. So they're just trying to create chaos through the Hunter's Fury and try to fight back at that spot. And it turns out that BCJ used that opportunity to fall back a little bit further back and ult even from the entrance of the B site uh, so, or B spawn so that he could actually get that detain on to a Rude, which then did not give a chance for Polaris to, to flood retake like they're usually re really good at. So and maybe despite losing that two versus two on Dolores's lower buy, they will not falter under the pressure or under these mistakes. They ended up having a pre pretty clean run. Quality now on the attack side up. That we mentioned before here, if he wanted to play against the Neon, and he will. Man, the off still in the hands of Koala Noob after that. Bit of a scramble from both sides as they lock eyes. And Sato first blood. I know again. exactly where you Tough are. one, but a good read for M80. Once again, Sato. catch him in the same spot he always is. From the shadows to check out the B site. Not sure if he spotted out Luke, but he's. Just the way that Luke is now going towards the top site. Want to play? He wants to play in a safer spot. Until now, hero play attempted, denied. This should be a round now converted for Amity, especially with Net's position on top middle. He'll hear the rotate of the breach. He'll call that out. He knows that Evil Kick usually plays towards the market, so only one player is unaccounted for, and that's going to be rude. But so much time is being wasted. Look at the retake from Galoris because they don't know the position of their opponents. They have to make the noise and they have to re-clear everything and it's looking pretty good here for M80 for the Pulse plan. Yeah, call line flash, paranoia. Galoris have decent options, but just not the firepower, or I should say manpower. When M80 could cover market, cover mid, cover main. Switching sides. And yeah, their base is covered, and look, everyone getting <laughs> fired up on the M80 side, and they got fans in the crowd, too. Nismo is definitely going to be the type of person that's going to be amped up here for the crowd, for the team. And the discussions, you even saw it from the huddle, how vocal he was with the team. They really want this right now, of course. He fell short last year. They could be falling short shorter this time around, as I mentioned before, but they're looking pretty good here on just punishing this one-dimensional play on the defensive side of Galora so far. If it wasn't for that four-player walk down towards middle where they didn't continue to push, they didn't try to continue to fight, it was just uh, Asado not sliding from short this time around, but slid from elbow and still got punished the same way. So I, I, I think it was a little bit too one-dimensional on that side and that front. And if it wasn't for some sort of heroic plays in these low buys from Sherry shots from Evil Kick, it would have been a, a, a much different story here for M80. A strong first half, eight to four. A lot of Sato fans, especially in the crowd, who is still waiting to get into that spotlight to, to really be that star player for Galoris as one of the biggest pop-off players we can have in Ascension who has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe against any duelist we've had in Ascension. And the key to victory to teams that face M80 is how can you find Koala Noob? The guy who's had the most first kills but also the most first deaths. The one that you can exploit from M80. But after that Koala Noob ace, oh, there is just something in the water. There's something. M80 only locked into this match knowing this is their last chance to try and make Ascension. Yeah. And as you bring up that point, I think maybe that's why you're seeing Sato just trying to slide so early in these moments. It's Paul Noob is going to be the one in the front trying to scout out opponents and TP away. We just saw that in that previous round. But when Sato tries to go for the chase, there's still two or three other people just crouched really behind him, waiting to fight back. There's lack of utility here from Galoris to have a strong defensive side. But now they have a chance to dictate the pacing yeah. on the attack side. When I was watching here M80 play their attack side, it was, I was almost watching G2, or sorry, 2G <laughs> uh, against M80 previously, where they worked the map on their defaults very, very well. Now for Imagine M80, G2 versus G2. Sorry, yeah. random thought, but go on. Yeah, G2 against G2, I think G2 would win. 2G versus G2. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, that's you. 
But we talked about the Galore's pistol stats. What is it? Almost 75% win rate. And I'm trying not to curse it. I swear. But it's first blood as Galore's wrap around through mid behind M80. But Koala Noob not only gets a kill, but teleports back to safety and evens things up. Gives him a chance to flood retake, but Nismo's down, so that's an important piece of utility that's missing. That might not give too much value out of Dizzy, as I say that it applies to you. Man. M80 turning around. Shadows traveling. The odds. Now it's just rude. 1v2, some damage done, and he reveals his position. And now you're playing chicken against bullets. You just have to prevent the defuse. And Rude couldn't do anything about it. M80 will take the pistol. I love how Ned just waited the whole time. And as soon as his defuse, he shoots in it and actually gets that pick. And that's just unfortunate there for Galoris. Uh, it. it it wasn't supposed to come down to this. They planned for, you know, the, the spam coming in, the crossfire setup from short and also from elbow. But because they lost all those players in the process of that dizzy that was being thrown, thrown sorry, that blooded so many players, it's not planted to a point where Rude could actually go for a spray through the smoke uh, into the default spot, tucked into the corner. We could only focus on, or we should only focus on a quarter of a circle to get that spray. Now I mean here. Looking quite strong here to close out this first map of the series against Dolores. Oof. Oh, well, that judge hurts. No more lurk for you. But hey, that's fine. Dolores don't want to mess with that judge. They're pushing elbows, sending the whole squad there, actually. No one hold a short smoked off, so Dolores have to work with what they can see, and all they see is something darkness, death, M80 to stop the flood from even developing. The aftershock, Rango knows the exact distance, but now four stuns come his way. Man, Meteor are rolling them. Yeah, and forcing BCJ to hunt it down too so they can get the thrash activated ASAP. But you talked about just not wanting any smoke on the judge towards the B main. They ran into just two players just spamming with Guardian Inspectors, and it was good enough here to drop the players over of Galoris to who are trying just to get a plant down towards this, uh, towards this A site, which again, that would have been two plants build up the economy on their side and hoping to bring the, the tally bag here in their second half. But this is a much different Galoris that is unexpected so far because it hasn't been as like clean cut in protocol that we know that they could do. I'm hoping that this changes now that they have weapons to work with. I mean, you just have to hold angles like they're not being pressured or forced out of positions they just they just hold and galores flood into them and couldn't do anything against the crossfire that MED had previously now with mid control not as you know there's no excuse of, of smoke standing in galores's way and now with the solva you go for more information and instead of flashes but see if that will award galores any rounds Still having a recon now using the drone to explore market. On the other side is BCJ with four util. Sato tries to isolate the entries. It slips through the molly, takes the top against Ned. Numbers even. Now the cards are on the table for Galoris. Standing in front of them is Nismo. And playing alongside Koala Noob will just play the half of the site. And Yurango bests him. And Galoris bring it to a 2v2 with a judge in Xander's hand. BCJ hoping for a fight close quarters. But all this time is being spent that Xander could actually get the flank here with Last the Sheriff. Oh, misses One the shot. Enemy remaining. I have the spike. Hey, BCJ. Oh, he's still trying to collect or throw you till or something. And Galoris still got kick to it. Stay close as a boss. Still got kick. Still got evil man. kick for sure. <laughs> yeah. To be able to convert that round and give a chance here, a breathing chance. For Galoris, five to ten at the scoreline, but only one player remaining in the gun round versus the bonus. And it was a good read from M80 to start a solo play towards the A site with the trips. It was being held by Xander that holds a tight, uh, a tight quarter, but the camera was was everything to watch towards short, to watch towards top middle, and the position that Nismo could be to support with the fault lines. They had everything going to their to their name until Evil Kid got that flick. They're on to Xander. Right there. And that for sure had to be a Sean Garris curse. <laughs> 5 HP. Evil Kick still kicking at least. 
Now they crunch into B. No time wasted using the neon wall to cut off market. Great play by Sato. Using that high gear. Clears everything. Just one last trip and maybe just to give a chance for Net to swing out if someone made contact with it. But now M80. Everyone in position for a 4v5 retake. The dimensional drift that could get them information if you wanted to wrap around back, but it will do this as a united effort, one for one. It's after shock. Not perturbed. Rude. Thrash now from the defense. Did get a lock. It's rude. And it just has to prevent the defuse from happening. And Wingman is removed, and so is the rest of M80. That's always missing. Getting that thrash over, but nobody's in the front with them to try to smother some players back towards that B main, trying to play the veg sunset spray. I think also Sean Garrison's chat likes to call it the butt set. But that said, you had this well tap onto the spike when BCJ is still alive that could throw the wingman and it could actually try to move a little bit more forward. Because it's not going to be Koala Noob's responsibility. He has an operator. He has to watch one line while he has to be the other two fighting. It has to be Nismo moving forward if BCJ is going to be in this thrash. So unfortunate there on how they're trying to retake that three versus four. And that breaks the econ and also breaks the ult econ for an N80 and gives Galoris once again another fighting chance off the back of how Evil Kick played on that previous round, the last two previous rounds. And now they also have the opportunity to cycle ults very closely in their favor now. And to build up towards ults if you're Galoris. Big farming round. Crops looking good, but it's first blood for Ned with the Sheriff. And man, it's just bloodshed over at the A side with the spike left behind. With Rude and Evil Kick in a 2v2. 50 on the line. I mean, not even can happen. Ascension from the shadows. Joining. I thought I was going to say, okay, pick it up the spike. Yeah, he ain't going to miss that one. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, That's so sad. <laughs> <A little> bit. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so at least at least he TP out. They're able to get that plant. And now uh, I love at least from the defensive side that they kept pushing forward to upgrade weapons. But they're going to make a lot of noise in this process where Evil Kick's going to hear all of this. So he's going to have to play the one and done. Both of the players will have to play a one and done. Paranoia is already being thrown here. So M80 is going to expect ahead. this double head up, this double hold. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Through the Paranoia, blinded, Koala Oh my God. We'll fall. 1v1. The spike about to go off. Not much more than Xander can do. And try to keep the rifle and even deny Rudes. Just can't believe that. That that was actually kind of sick though from Evil Kick. Right? So so whenever it happens that he's actually getting pushed by the dimensional drift. He gets his position revealed. He gets hit by a paranoia and throws a recon dart. So that while blinded, it actually pings out. Kowalanu coming out of his ult and gets the kill. And when we talked about it was going to be two individual plays there coming through on a two versus one in favor of M80 until Evil Kick pulls magic out of his hat to win that 1v1 against Kowalanu and give that chance for Galoris to, to win that round and actually closing the gap now by three only. They are doing such a good job here on the defensive side and not giving a chance, or sorry, attacking side and not giving a chance here for M80 to fight back where we are in these positions for M80 side where they like to force this off as soon as possible for Kuala Noob, but it makes it so much more difficult for them to play the retake on towards these sites. So they could keep pushing Kuala Noob away into these lines of sites with the operator, then that should give them not only aggressive positioning right after the TP, but also aggressive positioning in post plant scenarios where Kuala Noob is going to have to hold a different angle and you're hoping to, you should know not to run into those angles. So I like the scaling that's that's happening right now for uh, for Galoris. Well, worst case scenario for M80. I know they're on a three round loss streak. There seems to be a, at least a wife for net in the crowd. So take the dust where we can, I guess. But <laughs> they don't want a wife. They want no to run, ascend run. to VCT. M80 with a three round lead. A defense that's trying to stack towards A, but now happily, charitably giving that space up to Galoris.
But losing Evil Kick in the process isn't ideal. They'll still do their best, even with the paranoia being thrown by Xander to shake things up. And Sato sat down once again with the rolling thunder for Yurango to push on the... Oh, jeez. Rude. That's disrespectful. Nismo will clean it up at the end of the day for M80. Sorry, I got overly excited as how it was nothing but cosmetics coming out from Rolling Thunder and people are getting stunned and still getting kills on both ends. That was so close there. If Rude could actually connect into that last kill towards the back and isolate that 1v1 uh, towards the end. But it, it almost didn't have to come down to that. They had the Hunter's Fury to clear out that space from Evil Kick. It did get the ping here onto BCJ, but then scaling within that site, that micro scaling that was, I was giving a lot of confidence here for Galoris to be able to move into the site. They lose one player in the process, and yeah, they they, they fought fairly aggressively in the pulse plant to, to try to make a play. I would understand that. You're a player behind, two players behind on the pulse plant. You're hoping Someone's to flip there. the map with the Rolling Thunder. But M80 just had too many bodies with good crosshair placement that denied here the push towards the spawn and puts M80 now at two points away of closing out the first map. ECJ already got a ping off his flash over top of A. Behind him is Nismo, who will hold the rolling thunder for the execute. If it were to still happen at A, I think with Galores feeling discovered, Gonna shift oh their God. attention. Like oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Uh, hey, at least he awarded him a was. shot and yeah. could have brought his knife out. Could have made that worse. But <laughs> yeah, good luck, Net. At this point now, yeah. I mean, he was getting pinched all over right after as soon as Xander died. So that that is just one round where you're just unlucky, pretty much at this point. You think you have a timing. You're almost watching it to a point where, from where Xander's position is, I feel like maybe Net. Should have been watching towards main. I'm not too sure what was missing there. But that was that was a free kill from Look Show that just gave the round here for Galoris. Let's let's reset, go next. But it's not the type of results you want. I mean, both both teams are getting the, the same type of root losses coming out of these timeouts, right? Galoris previously had a timeout on the first half and they got denied here by M80 on, on their attack side. M80 calls a timeout for the previous round, but going into this round here, they get backstab and instantly Galoris gets a plant within the B site and a five player full roster stays live for the Black Life Flawless. And that's gonna help too into the later rounds for Galoris to stay within reach here of tying up the game. And this could have been a different round if Galoris continued to commit to the A site. If they played into the M80 hands, of a rolling thunder that had that their name on it but galore is very smart to take their time after they got pinged by the gecko flash to shift over and m80 were operating pretty blind and they they get blindsided at the end of the day i mean xander that was pretty funny <laughs> i don't think he's doing anything but laughing still only two <laughs> rounds away for m80 take map one here galores will stay on their tail a healthy alt economy oh. until Xander gets these picks. Again, He's just like, wait. out. Where, where, where's, where's, where's anything to follow up behind that in terms of util? Yeah. Sato, I don't, I, we're going to have to look into his, his FD and KD towards the end, but he's not looking like he's having the best of times High playing defensive beat. side or offensive side of Sunset here. Well, Xander's like, wait till I'm front facing. Wait till I can shoot yeah. back. <laughs> this will be a whole different ball game. Yeah. Maybe just Galoris thought that M80 would just be looking down the tunnel of center mid instead of on that angle that Galoris were pushing from. It was a different approach for Galoris, and they're throwing everything but the kitchen sink at North America's greatest. And Luke will hope to keep the rifle with the spike way out of sight. This will put to M80 to map point. Okay, let's, let's tango. Like man, Luke. I have retrieved the spike. Got a one v one there. Dude. Able to escape towards B. They put a camera out there so they could play the contact, in, and it wasn't even at a spot. Oh my god, that was that was a risky play. <laughs> that was a risky play. I respect it, but I, again, that that was that could have been something different there for for M80 to potentially lose. Trying to play the contact out the cam, at least if it gets picked up, but then everybody fell back and falling back gave so much space here for Luke to move up and then just win that one you want against BCJ where 
It should have been, if anything, an instant trade. But thankfully here, he ran back into the open arms of M80, rotating over towards his B site. And then it's still going to be the same finish towards the end, the same conclusion that it is map point for the first map for M80. And Galoris now forced to go for another timeout, their last one of this uh, first map. And this was a Galoris map pick, by the way, just a little reminder. And went the distance last time, M80, a whole different different beast when it comes to playoffs when it comes to the lower bracket who got humbled by 2g to be one round away from taking map one and then bringing themselves to ascent which isn't the m80 ice box it isn't an m80 lotus but it's still m80 who have barely shown any weakness when it comes to at least their map pool in north america yeah. But they're going up against teams that you know m80 don't scrim they have different play styles and just different players to go up against Th this was uh, this would actually be very good for m80 if they close out sunset against galoris here because if they play ascent and they haven't brought anything new then we know that they should be playing double senti with the koala noob on yoru which is something that they're good at they're comfortable with and they're playing against a galoris that also plays a double senti with a deadlock and they're okay to play against that because north america kind of spearheaded that with uh with dart zero with turtle troops so that would give an opportunity for M80 not to show their hand on Abyss in a third map. Right there. Should they lose this map right here. So to Come close this out. is super important for M80 in the long run in terms of gaming the map veto against their opponents. Go, go, go. Stop. Rolling thunder through mid. He's sectioning the field in half. Gives first blood to M80. They have rifles and M80 have the perimeter. Dolores got caught in this place, but now they got smokes to make their focus more aligned. Now that that clears, Dolores gets a cheeky angle on BCJ. Now with a cage on the left, they could obscure if anyone were to come out of the B site. And Dolores will continue to try to use the element of mystery to collapse on the market in a second. Yeah. They're just setting up here. They, you want to get Arango into main, making sure he clears that first so that he, they could go for a timing, break the door, he fault lines in there, and then they hopefully take down these two players of M80 inside market. From the shadows, left. meeting a friend at the back of the site. Now the market engage ensues, and you're seeing Ned step into that smoke and didn't get the head to play on Rude, and it's a 1v2 for the win. Koala Noob. Behind, won't be able to prevent the plant. Dolores on the post plant. Just gonna play out of sight. All a noob still. No way, he's doing flash. that. He's <laughs> no <laughs> he's way, he just it did look that. like he's a club. <laughs> he can get away with it. Got a flash, and they divide. Oh they section. Koala noob dances, and he gets one, but not the other. Great coordination out of Dolores. They buy another round. <laughs> I still can't believe it. Oh my god. Oh, imagine that worked. Imagine if that worked. I mean, you gotta have some fun with it too, right? And they already probably heard the TP from the back lines too when he actually went across the, the TP into B main. So I respect that play. And he almost got that drive by ADS kill onto the left side, which would have been the clutch of the century if Koala knew pulled that. That would have been on clips all over Reddit all over YouTube Reels, anything, TikTok, whatever you name it. <laughs> but now for uh, for M80, they still have at least some economy to work with, but they've pretty much made it towards the bottom of the barrel. Only a judge now in the hands of Xander and playing at close range, a good spot that we know here that Superman kind of likes to play too, and is very dangerous at that position. So Glorious now not reading into that, going to what would give them a little bit more space leading here towards the A side. Look how turtled up we are for M80. There is going to be zero information, all reactive plays, tight angles being held by BCJ. You're trying no. to react on the fly here from M80. No eyes on mid, but all eyes are on Galoris. If they can keep this round alive and a thrash did Managed to detain someone, and Galoris will even up the numbers. Damage done, though, to their forces as the spike carries through to A. 
And there's still Koala Noob to worry about with Nismo on the other side with Util, but you're probably not going to have time to use it. 3v2 for the win. M80 right through the box, couldn't prevent the plant. But hope to punish Root and Evil Kick. Bites back. 2v2. Smoke's in the way. Once that clears, it's all on the table. Oh, oh my what God. a swing from Root. Paranoia. But Root had smoke and he slips into elbow, teleports. And Xander missed his opportunity. At least got Evil Kick. He's already bleeding out. 1v1. It's gonna smoke himself off taps the spike knows root could be out in the open and sander the mind games to give m80 the map win on sunset and you wanted your rgl to step up in that moment a simple clutch to win that first map here for m80 and great position great plays at least from rude to try to keep it alive there from galoris but you have players that seems for the camp of m80 fairly confident to win this series against Galoris, despite in these moments where they were struggling a little bit versus lower buys. But the game plan that they had around Sato's aggression on the defensive side was spot on from A to Z, well read, and on their attack side, really worked that map uh, quite well here for, for ME. So this was a much needed first map to almost secure it here, you would like to say for M80, because you're going into a second map of Ascent where you have some tape of how Galoris is plays, but they have no idea of what, if you're going to bring something new here on your map of Ascent. And the veteran ship showing on the M80 side in these very stressful duels coming down to 1v1s. And for Galoris, a lot of these players, this is their first team and yeah. everything is on the line in this lower bracket, choosing to go to Sunset, falling to M80. Up next, we're going to have Ascent, but before we go there, we got to take a break. We're from the desk. See you soon.